So to change the topic, I want to talk a little bit about American domestic politics and philosophy. So you've, you've talked in the past about your objections to classical liberalism. Now, um, now, I have a friend, Dave Rubin, who constantly cites himself as sort of a classical liberal, which seems to sort of cross over in broad strokes with libertarianism, just the basic non-aggression principle and that the government has no job regulating anything that is consensual activity. You've been, you've been critical to a certain extent of classical liberalism. How do, how do you distinguish between conservatism and classical liberalism? Con conservatism, first of all, all these, these terms, nationalism, liberalism, conservatism, it, it's important to be aware all these terms are 19th century terms. So when we trace their histories, I mean, th th these ideas really are much older than 19th century, but when we trace their histories, it's always a little bit anachronistic. So well, let's take someone who's sort of, everybody kind of agrees is the, you know, the conservative is Edmund Burke. Um, Burke was not the first conservative because he himself stands for an, an, an Anglo tradition that goes, goes back many centuries, and that's the way he saw it. But, um, but since everybody agrees that he's a conservative, so, so let's take him. Edmund Burke um, spent his career um, arguing a version. He, he, didn't, he didn't explicitly oppose the British Empire. He wasn't trying to overthrow it. But all of his major fights were uh, to help in the self-determination of the American people, the Irish people, uh, India, which was controlled by the British at the time, is a very, very strong sense that the British cannot sit in London and make decisions for all these other countries in the world. That, that's simply not possible. You, it can't be just and it can't lead to freedom. That, that, that's, his, that's kind of fundamental. Now, Burke is, uh, sees the world in terms of nations just like the Bible does. He inherits a common law tradition you know, of, of thinkers like Selden and Fortescue and Koch, Hale. These thinkers all see the world in terms of nations the way that the Bible does. And what holds these nations together is a, a, a love of an inheritance, a tradition. I already, already said it's not homogenous. Every, every nation is internally diverse. But there is some kind of a tradition. Burke thinks the English tradition is simply the, 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 the best tradition of government that there has ever been, the, 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 the freest. And he's talking about uh, English Christianity and the common law and, and obviously the, 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 the English language. Now, putting the nation and its traditions in the center is extremely different from what later comes to be called liberalism. Liberalism grows out of that tradition. But what, what troubles me when I, you know, when, I, when I talk to my classical liberal friends is that they think that Enlightenment rationalism, that at some point in the 1700s, some really, really smart people figured out a bunch of rights which simply are the answer to you know, the way everybody in the world should live. And I, I think this is historically you know, utterly false. What, what actually happened is that over a thousand years of, of commenting on the Bible and developing their common law, the English developed almost all of the rights that are in, in the American Bill of Rights. And the Americans sort of copied and pasted it along with most of the structure of, of the American Constitution. And um, understanding that that's what happened, first of all, it makes you a little bit more humble because it means that you don't sit around thinking, oh, my brain is so smart. I know universal truth. I know the answers for all countries for all time because you know, cause, 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 cause I have universal reason. I think that universal reason is unbelievably dangerous. I think it leads to imperialism. I think it leads to all sorts of terrible wars. And internally, it can also lead to oppression. Burke's um, conservatism is much more moderate because it's, it's realistic. He, he knows that nations um, are are internally diverse, that they consist, consist of different tribes, and he's looking to try to figure out how can we hold our nation together? How, where can we draw the borders so that they are safest? How can we deploy our resources so that our country goes on for many, many more centuries? And I feel that, you know, Americans actually had a lot of that Burkean common sense conservatism back a generation ago before the new world order. And, and I miss it. I mean, when I, when I was sort of inducted into the conservative movement in the 1980s, you know, we were always talking about how do you, you know, how do you synthesize Edmund Burke and Adam Smith? And 
I thought that was a pretty reasonable place to be. That's a, that's a, a pro-religion, pro-nationalist uh, view of, um, uh, of freedom and, uh, and, and uh, free markets as leading to economic growth. I, I thought that was a great place to be. And somewhere along the line in the last 30 years, uh, the American and English uh, British conservatives dropped religion and uh, dropped nationalism and, and, and they're just on free markets. And okay, I, I, I also believe in free markets, but they're so far gone, they can't tell what a border is for. Right? And this is really important to understand. Classical liberalism does not in and of itself have the resources to tell you about borders, for example. Right? If, if, if all you do is study liberal thinkers, who, when, I, when I say liberal thinker, I, I mean any thinker who thinks that politics can basically be reduced to uh, free and equal individuals coming together uh, on the basis of consent. If you think politics can be reduced to that, and you don't understand that, that there's mutual loyalties that pull tribes together and that pull nations together and that any statesman worth anything has to care about those things, well, so you're not going to understand. So what's the problem of, op of open Im immigration? Let's just flood the country with people of a different national tradition than we do. What's wrong with it? If you're a classical liberal, you can't answer that question. And that, that's disturbing to me that Americans can't answer that question anymore. Facts don't care about your feelings. And it's a fact that The Ben Shapiro Show is the largest conservative podcast in the nation. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and stay up to date on all of our content.